Welcome to Mining Green, where we share inspiring stories of how the mining industry is leading the way to a net zero future. I'm Brett Dunstone, and in this episode, I'm speaking to Marco Tourism from Energy Vault. Energy Vault is the creator of a gravity based energy storage system which relies on gravity and 35 tonne bricks to store and release energy. They've been testing their technology at their commercial demonstration unit in Switzerland for the last couple of years which has been providing uh, electricity into the Swiss grid. And they've had some pretty good success there, getting some round trip efficiencies around 75%. However, this tall tower model has come under a bit of criticism for being too tall. It can be up to like 200 meters tall and potentially being unstable. It looks quite ungainly with its six, six booms and you know, it's just looks a bit crazy. So Energy Vault have pivoted away from this initial prototype to their EVX technology, which is a simpler and much more elegant solution where the bricks move up and down and side to side inside the side of building on trolleys. Uh, it's just a lot, lot simpler and streamlined and it's, you know, building approvals and no, no problems. It's, it's lower. So it's just much cleaner solution. So without any further ado, let's get on with the show. Yeah, the, the topic is super exciting, and so I think that it would be a great conversation. Uh, an industry like mining has adapted, uh, just you know, to warm it up a little bit of the conversation here. 20 years ago, it was probably unthinkable to see how the mining industry could have embraced the transformation towards electrification and decarboniz decarbonization. And uh, I think that ultimately money talks and uh, technology have reduced their marginal cost and uh, solar, wind. Uh, energy storage. Now we are talking also about uh, the possibility to replace fossil fuel with uh, green ammonia or eventually also green hydrogen for uh, locomotives, vessels, and uh, operational mining. And uh, so that becomes really a target at the mining sector for a significant transformation uh, that uh, will benefit, uh, will provide benefit to the environment and also provide, a, in a certain way, additional economic value to the industry, the mining industry itself, with additional investment, not in traditional activities like mining, but uh, in collateral form of equipment that uh, are helping to uh, provide additional value to the industry. And uh, for example, the state of Australia, that uh, I think is, is, is playing a significant role in uh, the decarbonization, not only of the industry like mining, but also international transportation, the role of green hydrogen. So very exciting topic. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least here in Australia, business is leading the way in decarbonisation. I think mining can help help lead the way in a way because it you know, really helps, you know, be able to make it cleaner, sort of underground and safer and just, you know, better for the climate. So, yeah, yeah it's a, it's a win-win. You know, when you've got a federal government here, that's basically... Hugging, hugging coal, coal miners, and they, they, they strip, you know, really tightly grasped onto the coal industry. They don't want to let go. It's sort of the businesses, they got to lead the way, way, you know, to a greener future. So I'm curious to learn, like, you know, how, how you personally, you got into sort of the energy storage, energy, energy vault sort of space. What's your, what's your background? I'm a mechanical engineer as a, as a training. I got my PhD in energy economics and, uh, since the beginning, I started to work in the energy sector first. I joined a, a consulting firm in Europe. Rapidly, I, I, I'm originally from Italy. I moved internationally. I started to work in Switzerland, in Germany. I also moved, I, I also studied here in the US for my MBA. Uh, I had the, the opportunity to work at a GE Wind during my, the, the internship uh, in the second and first year, the first and the second year of the MBA. And uh, at one point, uh, I wanted to push a little bit the boundaries of my experience and I made a decision to move to China. I'm talking about 2007. Yeah. So it was my <laughs> experience in Asia, Asia Pacific. And uh, at that time, uh, there was in place the Kyoto Protocol, uh, the, the, the very first attempt to address the climate change problem uh, on a global scale. And um, as every first attempt, uh, uh, the architecture of, of, that, uh, of that initiative was probably not ideal because in the end, there was a significant transfer of value from Europe 
and the West in general to developing economies without uh, uh, driving real technology innovation uh, as a first attempt. I'm talking about uh, uh, the period between 2005 and 2012. And, uh, but there was clearly a great uh, bench test uh, for the international community to understand uh, how to provide pricing signal to technology provider, to companies and people that want to develop new technology, starting from R&D, starting from ideas, pushing the uh, productization of this idea, and ultimately trying to make this initiative very cost competitive. I personally started to look at energy storage as the enabler of this transition towards a uh, low carbon economy in 2015. Initially, I, was, I took a job as a managing director for a French utility, Engie. At the time, I was working for a subsidiary of Engie uh, with a technology on hydrogen. Very interesting. Probably a little bit ahead of his time, but I was a great starting point to understand the dynamic within the industry. I also took a job after the experience with Engie as a head of product with STEM, a company that is specialized in uh, energy management system software to enable customers that use energy storage system to monetize storage that is still an expensive technology in a certain way. And uh, I moved on and I continue my experience in storage, developing projects in, in the field of storage and renewable energy. For three years, I was head of storage at a, a German utility. I was based in San Francisco. And my job was to find out the ideal location where to install storage, standalone or coupled with renewable energy. And that was really the perfect uh, point of observation to identify the emerging technologies because as a, as a project developer, we were very interested to look for technologies with a, a significant potential for cost reduction and with some unique characteristics, like a lack of degradation of the storage medium, a uh, possibility to interact with the industry, like the mining industry, in a synergistic way. And I came across Energy Vault, and that was really something, something very unique because I, I wanted to use that technology for, to bid into the project that I was developing when I was working for that German utility. And at one point, I realized that there was really an opportunity to make a difference so that was really my drive. And I joined the company as a chief product officer. And since then, we have deployed a very interesting technology platform that has solution for both short duration application and long duration application with our proprietary gravity energy storage solution. And across these two range, short and long duration, we have developed the most advanced energy management system in the industry that helps a company like BHP, Korea and Zinc, uh, that they are among our investors, uh, to optimize their uh, objective of decarbonization. For example, reducing the levelized cost of energy that uh, they want to realize when they invest in renewable energy, or reducing the cost of uh, uh, production of uh, green hydrogen and green ammonia. Quite a journey to say, for you to arrive at uh, Energy Vault, but you, you sort of see that as the way of the future, I take it. Like the gravity storage, the, all the benefits that it holds. Yeah, the, the company was founded in 2017. Since the beginning, a strong focus on the market need. And so uh, it was a combination uh, in terms of a uh, 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 focus on product and technology of uh, uh, listening to the customer, listening to the need of, uh, for example, large energy user like mining company, or utilities or independent power producers. And uh, on the other side, looking at a water technology quite well understood in a certain way they could provide and could accelerate uh, the introduction of solution that ultimately gives tools to a uh, large company to deploy renewable energy faster. So that was really the initial point that I led today at this technology platform that helps company to adapt to renewable energy faster. Seeing that, you, you know, is it Switzerland you've been trialling the what is it, your commercial development unit, like the, the crane sort of layout? How's that gone? Is, and you're now transitioning more into that like energy vault resiliency centre. Is that sort of the, the way of the future? Like, Yeah, we, we broke down the, the go-to-market in two steps. First step was to prove in a way that it was self-evident 
that the technology works and the technology has basic performance. So we went ahead and we wanted to install in Switzerland a commercial demonstration unit, full scale unit, five megawatt, fully interconnected with a Swiss grid. And we wanted to prove that the round trip efficiency, a very important parameter when we come to the deployment of energy storage, was above the threshold of 75%. 75% is a kind of a magic number because if you have to run an entire cycle of charging and discharging a, a, an energy storage solution, you don't want to lose too much energy. So everybody was kind of testing our ability to be above that threshold and going through two significant due diligence with the two utilities, we were able to prove uh, that uh, the technology works efficiently and uh, is even better in terms of performance than what was originally expected. The second thing that we wanted to, to prove on a large scale was the ability to manufacture what we use as a storage medium, these large bricks uh, of uh, 35 tons each, in a very efficient way and uh, also economically attractive. That was very important because uh, as a long-duration energy storage solution, uh, we must have a very low marginal cost uh, for every incremental KWH of unit of energy that we introduce into the system. So that was essential to uh, prove that on one side, again, the round-trip efficiency is above the threshold of 75%, and on the other side, we, that we can establish a, a solution that has a very low marginal cost of energy. Yeah. Is that still running, that, that demonstration unit, or is that, you've moved on to the, the next phase? Yeah, that, that unit, that, that location in Switzerland, is really, in a certain way, our R&D center where we use new innovation. We want to test new innovative solution, and uh, we use the same site uh, to transition from the initial design, the, what we call the EV1, the crane with the multiple jeeps, uh, to the EVX, uh, our brand new product and the one that uh, we are uh, now developing around the world, not only in Australia, but also here in North America, in, a, in, a, in South Africa, and also in the Middle East, because uh, there is a significant need uh, for a long duration energy storage solution also in the Arabic Peninsula. And uh, so that location has been very instrumental, was very important for us to uh, test uh, every element that uh, was the innovative part uh, of the new solution, the EVX. And uh, we have invited many customers to witness firsthand uh, those solutions. And now we are moving straight uh, with the deployment of the new product that we call EVX that uh, has the shape of a building. Uh, is as the, the characteristic to decouple energy and power. So that means that uh, if a customer requires a solution with uh, uh, only three or four hours of duration, uh, we can deliver that solution. Or if a customer is more interested in longer duration solution, for example, to couple with uh, wind and solar for a, a longer discharging time, we have just to add the number of uh, mobile masses to make a longer the time for discharging. Yeah. So that the new sort of EVX is, is more flexible and adaptable, I suppose, stable. That's the sort of yeah. way, way it's going. Very often, you know, that is a question that we receive from customer. And uh, one important characteristic of the EVX is that it uh, is designed in compliance with the international building code. So it is like a building. And uh, this has created a lot of synergies and a simplification in the permitting process. So the height of the system, because it re we require a certain, a certain height to store power in, in the, and store energy in the form of a, a gravitational uh, energy, uh, is much lower, 45% lower than the original tower. And uh, we, we have been able to be in compliance with the International Building Code to making the permitting much easier. And uh, the decoupling of uh, energy and power provide flexibility in terms of a solution that we can provide to customers. And uh, I think this is one of the uh, reasons why the mining sector has been very adamant to not only to choose Energy Vault as a solution provider for energy storage, but also to invest. Because there is an, an additional element related to the utilization of waste material that uh, create synergies and uh, enable the circular economy of materials that uh, we are using in our, in our system. For example, 
we can uh, use coal combustion residuals or uh, mine tailings uh, for the manufacturing and production of the mobile masses that uh, we need uh, to store energy. So this created a lot of synergies in economy and a, a supply chain that is very local. And uh, in this period of time, when we see disruption uh, in the supply chain and also some concern about a security of uh, supply, etc., cetera, uh, is an additional reason for a utility mining company and a large energy user to rely on a technology like uh, our, our own solution uh, that uh, are uh, insisting on a local supply and so they are not disrupted by changing price for a lithium or a other solution around the world. Yeah. So it's a solution that can really fit just about you know, any application. It's very adaptable. So it doesn't need you know, very particular sort of you know, settings to be able to be operational. So it's as broad application, I take it. Yeah, it, it was very important in the last couple of years to listen very carefully to our customer in terms of requirement. Yeah. And uh, flexibility is one of the key requirements uh, when you have to deliver systems that uh, want to enable a source of intermittent power like uh, wind and solar. And so you really need a, a buffer in the middle. And, uh, and the technology is providing essentially that uh, element uh, to smooth and make it more reliable the uh, energy coming from a uh, uh, generation like solar and wind. Okay. So I, I, you've probably gone over a couple of them, but like, I'm curious the advantage, disadvantages of, you know, the energy vaults of systems compared to like, you know, traditional storage, batteries, pumped hydro, whatever else, like, you know, talk about, you know, the economics and sort of the, the efficiency and the environmental benefits, like, you know, what are those key benefits you see? Yeah. For, first, Energy Vault, uh, I believe, is a, a company with a unique value proposition because we have established in the last uh, in the last four years a technology platform that provides solution that uh, answer to uh, need for a short duration energy storage and also for long duration energy storage we have developed internally at energy vault a specific division called energy vault solution that is able to integrate any form of energy of energy medium to offer and provide flexibility to the customer so if a customer is interested just in a two hours duration we have technology to feed and to fit that solution if a customer differently doesn't have constraint in terms of space available, and these happen very often in Australia, and they are interested in solution for a longer duration, we have our own uh, proprietary gravity energy storage solution. Now, in terms of uh, uh, features and difference between, uh, let's compare our gravity solution with batteries, the first thing that uh, we can highlight is that uh, the storage medium uh, is not represented by an electrochemical process that uh, is working on transferring ions from a cathode to an anode, what happened within a battery, but uh, is uh, associated with a more intuitive process to lift and lower heavy object. And this is something that uh, everybody, you know, since mid-school is familiar with, is the force of gravity that uh, when you lift an object uh, is able to store energy just thanks to the elevation of that object. And when you want to release that, uh, that, uh, that energy, you have just to lower. So the most intuitive uh, form of energy storage using this principle is hydropower plant with uh, pumped characteristics, so pumped hydro. And uh, pumped hydro use water that uh, is funneled from uh, an upper reservoir to the, to the lower reservoir. And uh, you have a, a, a turbine and a hydro, a, a hydro turbine that are converted the kinetic energy of the water into electricity. And uh, when you have uh, the need uh, to store energy, you use the water from the lower reservoir and the, the same machine works in reverse fashion and pumps water upstream. It, essentially, our technology Energy Vault technology works in a very similar fashion, but instead of using a fluid like water, we use uh, dozens of bricks, uh, very heavy, 
with a higher density than water. So we take advantage of the fact that we don't need a specific geographic location to develop our solution, but we can install there wherever we can build a building. And in addition, we can take advantage of uh, a density of our mobile masses that is double than the density of water. So we have a, a much higher energy density per unit of surface. So uh, this is the, the fundamental difference between uh, an electrochemical solution uh, and our solution from the physical point of view. Now, in terms of performance, something that is very interesting and has also captured a lot of financial interest from, from the mining sector in, uh, in Australia is the fact that uh, our product, EVX, uh, does not experience degradation in the storage medium. So we do not have to spend additional money or, or uh, add additional uh, mobile masses during the technical life uh, of a system that is uh, 35 years, so it's pretty long. This equates to an advantage from the economic perspective because uh, we are saving money to our customer. The round trip efficiency of the system is with a new product uh, is quite close to the round trip efficiency of batteries that they are best in class into the industry. So we are around uh, 83 to 85 percent with a new innovative solution uh, with a motor generator and uh, active front end. So from that point of view, we are almost best in class. And uh, the long technical life uh, represents another strong incentive for a large energy user or a utilities to invest on an asset that doesn't need a, a frequent replacement of a basic component. And therefore, the total cost of ownership is pretty attractive. So that actual capital cost is set up. Like, I know you've got longer life, you know, for EVX or whatever, but how do you go, you know, like for like system to actual, you know, initial setup? Would they be sort of on par or? So this is a very interesting aspect. We, we have been able to position the technology with a new product in a way that uh, we are uh, cost competitive with batteries from the beginning, since the beginning. Yep. That is very important because it allows us not only to compete directly with batteries because we have the advantage of lack of degradation, but it also helps us to take advantage of price spikes, for example, what is happening currently with, uh, with batteries or alternative technology, and to capture the additional profitability that uh, we, can, uh, we can harvest, uh, essentially uh, uh, adjusting the price of our technology based on uh, the market fluctuation of our competitive technology. And uh, probably you noticed that uh, Energy Vault became uh, a public company last February, February 14th. And uh, this is an element of a significant advantage in comparison with a company in the same field because we have the ability not only to control our supply chain, but also to control also our profit margin. And as I was saying before, having a technology platform that provides multiple solutions, we can adjust our value proposition based on market condition and what customers are asking in that specific circumstance. Yeah, that sounds good. Definitely being competitive from the get-go is, is you know, a great place to be. I, on the environmental side, like I've read that you know, the, the your bricks that you use, they can be made out of recycled you know, components, whatever, locally sourced, you know, be it waste material, whatever different you know, local sources. Like that, that works well. You, know, you can make that into a good workable solution for the bricks. Yeah, the second part of the advantage that Energy Vault uh, has in comparison with other technologies. One and a half year ago, we had been approached by uh, mining companies and also utilities that were presenting us few problems. So uh, I can mention now a couple, of, a couple of statistics. The power industry just in the United States uh, has generated a... a an aggregate uh, volume uh, equal to a billion tons of coal combustion residuals. This material usually is not very well understood that by the public domain as a significant threat to, for example, uh, underground water, because all this bottom ash that has been burned 
over the last 56 years has been dumped into ponds that have not been properly uh, prepared to accommodate all this material. And uh, now there is regulation here in the United States and uh, also in Australia that uh, require the retrofitting of these ponds for the appropriate treatment of, uh, of this material because it's full of uh, heavy metals. So with the request from power company, we have been taking some of this material back in 2019 and testing the possibility to mix this material with a locally sourced soil that we use to manufacture our bricks. And we discover that it's possible to push the percentage of coal combustion residuals up to 75% of the total volume of these mobile masses and uh, without compromising the mechanical strength of our product. So that represents a, a solution that is win-win for the industry. It's an advantage for the power companies because they have a lower disposal cost of a dangerous material. And it's an advantage for Energy Vault because uh, we can be more cost competitive uh, when we provide an uh, offer for our gravity energy storage solution. Another example that was very revealing, in my opinion, is the strategic partnership agreement that Energy Vault signed with uh, Enel Green Power more or less one year ago. And uh, Enel Green Power presented us another problem. And uh, we, we, we welcome, you know, this possibility to have uh, this such an open dialogue with, with our customer. And they were pointing out to the fact that uh, the wind industry is experiencing a kind of a crisis because there is a significant number of uh, wind blades that after 15, 18 years, they have to be decommissioned. And uh, the decommissioning of this object slash material is kind of complicated. And the solution that has been adopted until a couple of years ago to dump these wind blades into into landfill is not possible anymore. There, there is a regulation in Europe and also here in the United States that are forbid dumping wind blades into, into landfills. And so we were facing this challenge. Is it possible to take uh, we, old wind blades, crush these wind blades, extract recycled glass fiber, and use this glass fiber on behalf instead of new glass fiber for the manufacturing of our bricks? And the answer is yes. Without compromising the, the performance of the bricks, we can replace a, a new product with a recycled product. And uh, this can be done at a fraction of the original cost of the virgin fiber that we would have used if we, if we didn't have this recycled material. So it's, it's a very interesting and inspiring aspect uh, of our journey and our relationship with customers because we have been able not only to provide a technology that is appreciated because of the lack of degradation, the higher on trip efficiency, the long technical life, but also it represents a possibility for our customer to remediate material that otherwise would have created an environmental problem and additional cost for their disposal. Definitely another you know, great benefit. I, I am curious, like, on this mine sites per se like we often have a lot you know a lot of waste material would that be something that you'd be able to utilize to create these bricks so we propose to customer with uh, mine tailings or coal combustion residuals or in general material that uh, represent uh, a problem for their disposal we, we propose a solution to incorporate that, those material into our mobile masses through a process that is able to uh, prepare and treat that original material, okay, that has to be properly treated to be mixed up with the soil that we need to procure locally. And uh, in that way, with this mix up uh, with the addition of our polymer that we have developed in collaboration with our industrial partner and Semex, we, we create a, a mixture that uh, uh, ultimately has a, a, a strength that it is enough, just enough for the operation of uh, our gravity energy storage system. So uh, ultimately, it's a way to solve an environmental problem that uh, comes without an additional cost for us but, a, but a, a reduction of total cost for a customer. 
Yeah, that's great. Great to see. I like the demonstration units being sounds like it's been quite successful. Like how long, you know, before we see the the, the EVX, you know, that sort of system running operating running units of that around around the around the world. Yeah, this is a very interesting aspect of our experience with uh, with with customers. So in the last six months, uh, uh, we have been able to uh, welcome within our shareholders two important players. One is BHP from Australia, and the second important player in the mining industry is uh, Korea Zinc. Both of these players. They have a significant operation in, uh, in Australia and uh, they invested in our company not only because they uh, realized the significant potential that Energy Vault has within uh, the, the, the industry, but also because they, they realized that it was possible to apply the technology at their sites in Australia, at their mines. And... Uh, we will see the first unit uh, breaking ground this year, both in North America and also in Australia. Okay. Are there any particular challenges that you see that might be different in the mining industry that you have to evolve the system to? Or I think that the mining industry is ideal for energy vault technology because uh, uh, very often mining operations are, are uh, remotely located and they have to replace fossil fuel to provide electricity with uh, solar and wind. For this reason, they need long duration energy storage technologies and uh, Energy Vault has technology with a low marginal cost of energy and that fits perfectly their need. You've been you know, involved with uh, Electric Mine Consortium, you know, probably since its inception, I believe. Uh, what sort of benefits have been, has come from being part of that? The energy Vault has launch his own operation in Switzerland and in, in the United States. So uh, we immediately realized that uh, being part of the consortium uh, would have provided a terrific value to our understanding on the industry and uh, also the possibility to communicate properly to not only the giant, uh, the, the largest mining company, but also company that uh, have more local operation in Australia. So uh, we understood that uh, this trend of electrification of the mining industry is unstoppable, has already started, and uh, we wanted to be part of this transition. Uh, and uh, also to make sure, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, our value proposition was well understood uh, by every player in Australia, in particular the most advanced players that are adapting and uh, they are playing a, a positive and proactive role in the transition. So that was a kind of a no-brainer for us to embrace and, uh, and join the consortium. Yeah, like a lot of the, the players in the sort of electric mine consortium and uh, uh, sorry, the more mid-tier sort of mining companies that probably are more willing to do things differently, you're not necessarily stuck in the way things have been done in the past. Like I'm just, you know, ha- how many of them like, are looking at sort of an energy vault system for their, their mine sites around Australia or elsewhere? Has it been, you know, quite a bit of interest from those guys? Yeah, that was surprising for us because we realized that almost every participant in the, in the mining consortium has been interested to develop, to engage with Energy Vault. So we have an active discussion with the many players within the Australian market and the consortium. And we have been able also to generate a significant interest and collaboration with the association that I want to facilitate the uh, introduction of uh, innovative technology like uh, our technology. So that has been very surprising. And I have to say that uh, the Electric Mine Consortium has done a terrific job in promoting not only the necessity to embrace this transition, but also to play a fundamental role in identifying the right technology and also the right company that are really helping this transition either towards directly renewable energy and or a significant effort that is undergoing the adoption of uh, green hydrogen or green ammonia for the transformation of their operations. 
good to see there's plenty of interest there. Like, I'd be interested to see, you know, when, um, you know, some of those companies start having units installed, you know, seeing it become a bit more widespread, you know, hopefully next couple of years will be, you know, energy vault systems all over the place. Yeah, Australia has, as you can imagine and you know, has a lot of land available. So yeah. for us is an ideal uh, location because from the geological point of view is ideal for the construction of a large infrastructure. In terms of grid, the mining operations are uh, remotely located. And so uh, their interest for and the, the effectiveness of a long duration energy storage system is it fits very well you know the the, the use case of, of the mining industry and and in general all these companies are big companies and so they are not looking for small unit they are not looking for something that uh, is behind the meter in the range of a kwh but they are looking for dozens of uh, of, of megawatt hour now we are easily uh, uh, entering discussion uh, for a gigawatt hour of storage and so that really help uh, not only the transition of that sector, okay, at this uh, scale, but also it is helping our economics because uh, every project uh, it's a it's almost hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, and so the, for us the mining industry is a target that really help our the development of our technology and also the achievement of our financial goals. Nice. If they could see the return, there's definitely the money there to invest, you know, if there's a good return, turn on from, to help them detach from the grid and become, you know, uh, self-sustainable then electricity. With the, this focus sort of on mining in Australia or whatever, is Energy Vault looking to have a presence sort of locally here somewhere in Australia? Yeah, so it's a very important market for us. We have already taken significant action to follow the market very closely. First, uh, uh, one year ago, when the mining, the, the, the electric mining consortium was founded, we wanted to be part of that, of that initiative to understand deeply what was the opportunity. And uh, uh, now we are about to make some announcement to make sure that uh, we can cover very closely the market and provide the best service to the customer that are covering and that are part of the mining industries. Okay. No, it's good to see. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for the chat today and making time, you know, and all the best with it. And I'll hopefully I'll catch you down the track another time. Thanks for tuning in to Mining Green, where we share inspiring stories of how the mining industry is leading the way to a net zero future. Don't forget to subscribe down below so that you don't miss out on any of our latest episodes. And please feel free to leave any feedback you might have in the comments section below. If you know anyone that might be interested, please also share our content as widely as you see fit. And lastly, Mining Green is brought to you by Inspirit Consulting. Inspirit Consulting is an independent mining consultancy run by yours truly, Brett Dunstone. Our strength is in strategic mine planning, but we are also passionate about innovative mining technology and the decarbonisation of the industry. Many of the topics that we discussed here on Mining Green. Please get in touch if you need a hand looking at an innovative new approach at your mine site. Details for getting in touch are down below. So thanks again for tuning in and until next time, we'll catch you then. <laughs>